Today on Rappler, ousted Chief Justice Renato Corona will not appeal his removal from office to the Supreme Court. That, that decision was made by the chief himself. See? Yeah, that was that, that was a call that he made. He wanted us to call the uh, ombudsman and uh, reveal what her what her basis is for saying that he has $12 million, $10 million in the, in the letter. Defense lawyer Dennis Manalo says the decision to put the ombudsman on the stand was made by Corona himself. Um, one of the problems that we had encountered was that the way the JBC voted was kept secret for a very long time. And the court watchdog group says the impeachment of Renato Corona and Mercedes Gutierrez, both vetted by the Judicial and Bar Council, shows the weakness of the selection process. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Former Chief Justice Renato Corona will no longer appeal the impeachment verdict before the Supreme Court. Defense spokesperson Tranquil Salvador III says Corona believes this is a closed chapter of his life. He will be moving forward. Defense counsels told media they need to find grave abuse of discretion in the proceedings to be able to ask the High Tribunal to intervene. Lawyers had mixed feelings about appealing the decision, acknowledging the possible backlash they would receive. On Wednesday, Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile warns Corona against going to the Supreme Court to question the senator's verdict. He says, if they want a constitutional crisis in this country, they will have one. Senator Judge Alan Peter Cayetano thanks the defense for accepting the verdict. Thanks, he says, for averting a constitutional crisis. I choose to believe they are doing this for the country. Defense lawyer Dennis Manalo says he came out of the Corona trial believing stronger than ever in the innocence of Renato Corona. Manalo also reveals the decision to call the ombudsman to the witness stand came from Corona himself. He notes history may turn out to be kinder to Corona. That decision was made by the chief himself. See? Yeah, that was that, that was a call that he made. He wanted us to call the uh, ombudsman and uh, reveal what her what her basis is for saying that he has 12 million dollars 10 million dollars in the in the letter did you know a question from at juanawana do you think everything will be different if corona didn't take the witness stand oh i think he we would not even get a single vote so he i, I truly believe that uh, that uh, the Chief Justice is an innocent man. And um, there is really here, as I've said, no evidence at all that the Chief Justice accepted the bribe, stole money from the government coffers. Mm -hmm. There's just no evidence about it. The only Corona walked out of the impeachment court. What was the immediate reaction of the defense? I don't know about the defense. I, I, I know about Justice Cuevas because Justice Cuevas yelled at me. Yelled at you? He yelled at me. He said, Dennis, pabalikin mo dito yan. Habulin mo. I'm not kidding. So I, I, I saw him. He, he, you know, whenever Justice Cuevas turns his head from the podium, I always expect that he would be looking at me, that the <laughs> chief would uh, not appeal this. And uh, his message to us then was that uh, the decision rendered last um, Tuesday will actually be a matter for history to decide whether it is wrong or right. What do Renato Corona and Mercedes Gutierrez have in common besides being impeached and being allies of former President Gloria Arroyo? Both got the unanimous vote of the Judicial and Bar Council, the body that screens and nominates candidates to the judiciary and to the office of the ombudsman. Both Corona and Gutierrez, in the view of the eight-member council, met the criteria of probity, integrity, and independence. 
Transparency and Accountability Network Executive Director Vincent Lasatin says the impeachment of these officials highlights the lack of transparency in the selection process. JBC members vote in secret. He also wants the candidates' interviews televised. One of the problems that we had encountered was that the way the JBC voted was kept secret for a very long time. Um, and therefore, it was very difficult to hold individual JPC members accountable for the kinds of the decisions that they were making. Authorities find a grenade near the residence of Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales in Muntinlupa City. In an intelligence report Wednesday, the Muntinlupa police says an M26 hand grenade was found inside a container near the gate of Morales' house. A security guard said he noticed an unidentified person in front of the house. He, the person immediately left when the guard approached him. That was when the guard found the container. Police increased security around Morales' house. She says, quote, it's part of the risk. If it's your time, it's your time. I'm just doing a job. Why do people lie? Using a matrix task to determine what factors cause people to cheat, behavior economics professor Dan Ariely of Duke University in the United States says, the following factors do not affect a person's decision to lie, the amount of money at stake, or the possibility of being caught. Ariely notes, the decisions have little to do with cost-benefit analysis and everything to do with the balancing act that people are constantly performing in their heads. The studies also reveal that very few people steal to a maximum degree, but many good people cheat just a little here and there. Ariely says these small forms of lying and cheating are more dangerous since behavior can spread and can, quote, grease the psychological skid to larger ones. What then can minimize dishonest behavior? Having moral reminders, such as the physical presence of an honor code, the Bible, or the Ten Commandments in the room can decrease dishonesty drastically. Ethics lectures and trainings seem to have little to no effect on people. Dan Ariely's new book is coming out next week. It's titled, The Honest Truth About Dishonesty, How We Lie to Everyone, Especially Ourselves. It's final. Starting June 15th, domestic airlines will face suspension fees if they bump off passengers from an overbooked flight and reject refunds and rebooking of tickets. The Civil Aeronautics Board amends its 40-year-old regulation after overwhelming consumer complaints against local airlines on no refunds and no rebooking rules of low-cost tickets. Airlines who violate will be fined 5,000 pesos multiplied by the number of passengers bumped off or denied boarding. The previous fine was 150 pesos. Local airlines are contesting the new rules and threatening to increase fares. Defying the expectations of market players, economists, funding institutions, and even the government itself, the Philippine economy posted a surprising 6.4% growth in the first three months of 2012. This better-than-expected performance is largely due to strong services and industry sectors. The government also cites the increase in tourist arrivals, healthy appetite for real estate units, and retail behind the growth. Remittances reach 4.8 billion U.S. dollars, which boost consumer spending. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 6, 5,000 anti-taxin protesters march in Bangkok to denounce a bill they say may open the door for the ousted premier's return to Thailand. The government of Thaksin's sister Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawatra wants to grant sweeping amnesty in the name of reconciliation. Royalists pushed Thaksin out of power in 2006. At number seven, a UN-backed war crimes court sentences Liberia's former president, Charles Taylor, to 50 years in jail. He was convicted on April 26 on all 11 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity for aiding and abetting Sierra Leone's Revolutionary United Front during the country's 1991 to 2001 civil war. In return, Taylor was paid in, quote, blood diamonds mined by slave labor in rebel-controlled areas. At number nine, high-profile entrepreneurs and investors say mobile-focused internet startups will shine despite Facebook's disappointing stock market performance. They say internet companies today are different from those in the late 1990s. 
Leaders of career-oriented social network LinkedIn stress the success or failure of a startup's IPO means little to the viability of an enterprise. LinkedIn's stock price doubled since its initial public offering a year ago. And at number 10, the Vatican's official newspaper is printing a special supplement for women for the first time in its 150-year history. The four-page color supplement, which will appear every last Thursday of the month, aims to promote better understanding of the, quote, underappreciated treasure of women in the church. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, May 31, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.